down, get into the back of the head now. Number 25, and follow along with me as I read the testimony of the redeemed. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east, and from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness, in a solitary bay. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. O oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High, therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word, and he healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful words to the children of men. Amen? Thank God for the reading of his word. And you know, again and again we saw the nation of Israel God has been good to them and faithful to them, yet they failed so many times, but the love of God endures. And when they cried out to the Lord, He heard their cry and He redeemed them. So, this is the Jesus that we serve. He's our Redeemer. Maybe you think that you're at a place that, you know, God doesn't love you or He cannot reach you, but the hand of the Lord is not short and He cannot you. His ear is open to your cry. Just come to him earnestly and sincerely and you will see that he will redeem you. You will see that he will lift you up. And this I'd like to call on one person just to share a word of praise and thanks to the Lord. I'd like to call on Sister Margaret this morning. I know that she has been working with some of the Congress who's going to be baptized. So maybe you can share
you live streaming. Good morning to you as well. So saints, you may have your seats. Today is a very special day for us uh, because uh, we are going to have a baptism this morning right after the service. And uh, we have uh, uh, the folks that are going to be getting baptized uh, already with us in the auditorium. And I know that they are excited about it. But before we introduce them, uh, we just want to recognize birthdays, recognize anniversaries uh, um, this morning. So I understand that uh, Sister Carol was your birthday yesterday. God bless you, God bless you. All right, I'm trusting you have a wonderful day. Did you have a lovely dinner? Did you go out or it was brought in? Oh, lovely Chinese. Pizza, what was it? Pizza. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. And don't get better than that at all. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else celebrating a birthday this week? Um, Suraj? Oh, Anna's birthday is Thursday, so a lot has been happening because the anniversary was Thursday gone. So uh, she's been choosing something special about Thursday. So happy birthday. Anybody else? Can anybody else? All right, well, let's just sing happy birthday to uh, Carol and Anna. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. Um, wedding anniversaries, I, 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 last week uh, we had uh, three persons celebrating our wedding anniversaries couples and uh, we have had the joy of having one of the couples uh, renewing their marriage vows and that was done on Thursday as well as Brother Clyde and uh, Sister Emily. So we say congratulations to you guys on the renewal of your marriage vows. Uh, 20 years, 20 years together, much in love, in fact more in love, more in love. And uh, I saw them just holding on to each other and dancing. Praise God. Much to be praised is because of, of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. So, Brother Kalani, I'm going to put you on the spot. And I know you want to say a few words uh, to your bride again. Amen. And to tell us too, glory to God, of the joy that you feel this morning. Bless the Lord. So, let's welcome Brother Kalani. Amen. Now this, this I know you are a man that of, of words of wisdom and knowledge always has something to say. Hi, good morning, church. Good morning. I greet the each and every one of you to the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed a pleasure being here this morning. You know, coming to know the Lord and having in my life has just been a blessing. Um, renewing my vows on a couple days ago, Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just reinforced, you know, the, the, the connection that we have with God. And the kind of calm and, and things that, that happens in your life. I have to say thank God that he have kept me all this time, all of many, many years I did not know him. When I did came to know him, it was wonderful. Coming to know the Lord has brought so much of joy in my life. It has strengthened me in my family like most of all. The Lord has brought me closer to the church, it has brought me closer to my family, to my children, yes. and my, my wife, who has been so patient with me. And you know, she continues to, to pray for our family, continues to to just be that light in our family. You know, for that, I'm very, very grateful. And all this is only possible through Christ, yeah. through our Lord. Amen. And my encouragement to each and every one of you this morning is just to hold on. Sometimes we feel that obstacles are so, so big in our life and we can't cross it. But you know what? We just keep praying, keep holding on. And little by little, it is not a magic formula. It happens over time. It happens. You would see those, you would look back and you would say, Wow, I did that. But it was only through the help of our Lord and Savior that it was possible. So keep holding on. 
keep having that love, continue to be in love with God. And as pastor was preaching, and I think that message reached home to me. Be faithful to God, and He will be faithful to you. He will continue to lift you up in every single thing that you do, and there will be great, great accomplishment. So continue to love the Lord, continue to worship. If your brothers and sisters have fallen, pray for them. Lift them up in prayers. Continue to lift up the church, the pastor, and each and every person sitting next to you, even though they're not next to you, if they're away from you, if they're away from yeah. the church, continue to pray for them. Lift up one another in prayers. Yeah. So that is my blessing this morning. I hope you all take it with a picture so. Amen. When he has been married, so I have to ask you, what's what's the secret um, of, a, of a successful marriage? I, I gave that away. I, I gave that away last week on Thursday already. I, I'm not going to try to give away too much things because <laughs> they can be overloaded on the brain and things like that. But as I was saying last week, uh, the successful to any successful marriage, you must be able. To create voluntary, involuntary muscular movement in the neck and in the jaw, so that when you're being spoken to, you will continue to say yes and no in the right places. Sometimes the mind telling you to say no, but the correct answer is yes. <laughs> so create those involuntary movements, and you'll be happy. There's a five years. <laughs> There's a, a lot more, but as you know, time passes and shade, so it will be too much for, for us to, 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 to get. So that's my advice. Right. But I show pastor have a few for us as well. <laughs> not, not, not much more. Me. Thirty-seven years of being married, so Christ says the secret of a successful marriage, you know, is learn to say yes. If the words can't come out, they all just yeah. Everything is yes. All right, you, you're right. Except it's always you're right. You're right. Wonderful, praise God. Well, I'm gonna call on. Those that are getting baptized, we just want to recognize you and just have a word of prayer with you. Uh, so would you guys come come forward in no special order? Just come forward this morning, stand uh, right here. Let's just recognize you. Praise God. So we are meeting our candidates for baptism today. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Great, great bunch. Yes. Okay, we have some of us at the school as well too. Okay. Well, uh, we have these here right now. So we have uh, Marcus and Ma Matthew and uh, V. All right. We have Simbu. Praise God. And Kia, Kira. Um, uh, we have our sister Linda. And uh, so nice to have a daughter, Ria. Uh, Ria, could you lift your hand and... Um, and a granddaughter Rashida, all right, God bless you guys for being here and supporting Linda and her ba baptism, God bless Sam and Anika as well, praise the Lord. So we're excited for you guys, I want to thank uh, the teachers who have worked with you uh, for the past several months uh, uh, in conference classes so that you are more educated uh, about your newfound faith and what baptism means and what baptism represents. Uh, so it's a great day for you guys. Um, I was excited when my time came for baptism as well. I can never forget of that day uh, when I was baptized um, uh, in, a, in a pool. You two will be getting baptized in the pool at the back of the church. Praise God. So we want to just uh, uh, pray with them. All right. Father, we are thankful and grateful for uh, these uh, saints. And uh, today... It's a great day for them. No, no longer living for the world. No longer living uh, for Satan. No longer living by the dictates of the flesh. It's a new life in Christ. All things are passed away. And all things have become new. And we pray, dear Lord, that they will continue to grow in your grace and in your knowledge. And be everything that God has purposed for them. We pray that nothing, dear Lord, will deter them. Nothing will distract them in their lives. That their eyes will be on the Savior now and forever. We pray, dear Lord, that you would bless them. 
uh, with uh, your graces, uh, dear Father, and the talents and the abilities that you have endowed upon them would, would become, dear Lord, manifested, dear Lord, and as they join the army of the Lord to be at Power and Science Ministries, uh, Lord, we are so thankful that, Lord, that you have saved them, dear Lord, and we pray that you would use them for your honor and for your glory. Everybody says, Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Well, yes, Shia. Shia just came in from Sunday school. So uh, let me make sure uh, we have two, four, six, eight. Uh, we have ten. Am I correct? Ten. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. So God bless you guys. If you have your seat, and right after the service, we're going to have the baptism. <laughs> Let's all stand as we take up today's uh, today's collection with the offering bearers who come with the baskets as we gave on to on to the Lord. Would you please hold uh, your offering in your hand as we just thank the Lord for His provision? Precious Jesus, we are so thankful that we can give an offering today that we can continue to trust you. You're always our Jehovah driver. Even in the time of famine, there is no lack, there is no want for the children of God. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you have given us the strength and the help of members. Dear Lord, you have been good to, be good to them. Thank you that you have been protecting them and keeping them from all evil, Father. We give today with a heart of joy and a heart of praise in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, there is power, power, wonder, word, and power. Even those, dear Lord, that uh, 
did not make it on their view at home. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May have your seats. Lots of rain, lots and lots of rain. But we're so glad we made it before the shower came, came down. Faithfulness. That's who our God is. Faithfulness. I want to begin by sharing with you a story. So there was a, a couple whose marriage was going on the rocks and sought the advice of a marriage counselor. So the counselor pleaded with them to patch up their quarrels. But they were very adamant. So what said the counselor? You know the consequences and you want to part? Remember this. You will have to divide your property equally if you divorce. So the wife fled up. So you mean to tell me the $4,000 that I have saved up? That I must give him half of my money? The counselor said, yes. Indeed, that is what is going to happen if you separate. He will get $2,000 and you will get $2,000. So what about my furniture? She asked. I paid for that furniture. Counselor said, never mind. Never mind. Same thing. Your husband gets the bedroom and the living room furniture, and you will get the dining room and the kitchen. <laughs> so there was a challenging gleam in the wife's eye. Then she said to the council, what about the three children? Well, that's something. The council has saved the situation. Then he came up, oh, I tell you, with a Solomon answer. Just like Solomon of the Bible, man of wisdom, the counselor said to her, well, go back and live together until you have your fourth child. <laughs> and when you have your fourth child, that will make it now a total, you will be equal now, four children, it will be equal. So, you could take two of the children and your husband could take two of the children. Well, the wife shook her head and said, no, 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 no. I am sure that will not work out because if I depended on him, I wouldn't have the three children that I have now. <laughs> well, just a kickstart for our sermon today. Amen. One forever faithful. Glory to God. You see, folks, this world does not know much of faithfulness. The faithfulness of this world is very fickle, circumstantial, does not last at all. Many people don't have a clue of what Paul is saying when he speaks about the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and verses 23, the Bible begins to list now the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, it is love, joy, peace, you know about memory, long-suffering, goodness, and notice, faith. Faith, the fruit of the Spirit. Meekness, and lastly, Temperance. Against such, there is no law. So, folks, I want you to see the connection here when it comes to a man, a woman, that is filled with the Spirit of God. What would be the result of a child of God that is filled with God's Spirit? The Bible says faith Amen. or faithfulness. In other words, it is very simple to me, folks, that if you are spirit-filled, you are going to be faithful. To say that somebody is spirit-filled and not faithful, folks, could never be one and the same. You cannot be talking about the same thing. You cannot be talking about the same person. It is simpler than that in the Word of God. So, you will know a person 
if they are truly spirit filled, because what will be manifested in their lives? Once you are spirit filled, you are going to be faithful. If you are not faithful, you are not spirit filled. You say, Pastor, what about the speaking in tongues? So that's wonderful. That is great. What about the prophesying? That is great as well, too. You know, what about, um, I tell you, just being, uh, you know, loud and praising God. All those things are wonderful folks. Um, but I want to see a sure sign that somebody is filled with God's spirit. Uh, there will be faithfulness, Lord to God. The word of God is clear about that. When Mr. and Mistress Henry Ford celebrated their golden anniversary, a reporter asked them, to what do you attribute your 50 years of successful married life? Mr. Ford said, he said, I'll give you the answer. The answer is in uh, the formula. The answer is in the formula. Well, what do you mean? He said, it is the same formula I have always used in making cars. As you heard before this thing, you know, yeah. the manufacture of, of uh, make of the, oh, the Ford. And so he said, I use the same formula. What is that formula? The formula is stick to one model. That's the yeah, I love I love that answer. He says that is the success of his business and the success of his married life is to do what? Stick to the same model. Stick to one model. Praise God. So Kylie, your 20 years of marriage is also attributed to the fact that you have stuck to one model. And Emily wants to ring his ears right now and says, you hear that? Make sure that you always stick to one model. There are lots of newer cars on the market. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yes, there are lots of different colors of cars on the market. There are a lot of different shapes of cars on the market. Some are broad, some are sleek, some are high, some are low, some have big, broad tires. <laughs> some, some just neat. You understand what I'm saying? Some have four cylinders, some have six cylinders. Some fuel injected, some hybrid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, somebody. <laughs> you have all kind of models out there. But folks, I want to say, if you want to be successful in your marriage, stick to one model. Stick to the same model. I don't care how many cars passing up and down. Stick to one model. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I don't care how nice they're looking, stick to one model. I don't care, they say, Pastor, oh, the fast. Listen, stick to one model, praise God. That is the success. And so, folks, I am saying to you today, the success of your Christian life and your walk with the Lord. For those of you getting baptized this morning, it's good that you are hearing this message because I, I try to fit in knowing that we are having baptism. I try to incorporate that in my message today just for you. Praise God. The secret of being successful in your Christian life and weathering the storms of life, weathering the adversities of life and the challenges of life and all that is happening outside in the world and all that is happening in the church in the time of uncertainties and the secret that will last you an entire lifetime so that you will remain constant like who God is and remain faithful like who God is is to stick to one model, praise God. Stick to Jesus. Give him praise on life. Hallelujah. Stick to Jesus. Praise God. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. 
There are many models out there that promise a lot, a lot of things. They may have a lot of gadgets inside. Today you talk about gadgets, but we have a lot, lot of gadgets. They may offer quick fixes to the problems that you might face in life. But be very careful about some of these promises uh, because folks, uh, many of them do not deliver what they promise. They may deliver you joy, but you might have pain instead. They might deliver you solutions, uh, but you might find that you might have uh, problems instead. Uh, if you stick to Jesus, uh, if you stick uh, to one model, praise God, um, and you do not turn to the right or to the left, um, but you are constant um, in your service, in your faithfulness to God, um, you will find that you will continue to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Uh, praise God, that you are going to be successful, glory to God. And this is what God uh, wants. You got to watch out, folks. There are many distractions out there. Many, many. There are many Delilahs out there as well. We are talking about the Delilahs of uh, instant gratification. This is what is promised by our world that we are living in. Instant gratification. Instant pleasures. But folks, it always results in one thing. Disappointment, heartaches, and the destruction of lives, the destruction of marriages, the destructions of home, and worse, the destructions of souls itself. If you want to succeed, then folks, look to Jesus. Be faithful to Him all the days of your life. Now, we are in point number one of this message here on Forever Faithful. And that is we are giving, I've been giving a definition of faithfulness. I started that last week. So I want to, the first definition I gave, I gave you of faithfulness is to be constant. Because that's who our God is. He's unchangeable. The Bible tells us Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same forever. Our God is constant. Not one day he is this, and the next day he is that. Not one day, folks, uh, that he will be with you, and the next day he abandons you. No, 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 no. Our God is constant. Uh, throughout our lives, uh, you will find uh, him uh, to be there. You will find him to be faithful to you. You will find that he will never leave you. He will never abandon you. That's who our God is. He cannot do anything otherwise because this is who he is. A faithful God. He will never become unfaithful. He will never leave you for anything else or for somebody else. Folks, once you are his, you are his forever and ever, ever. He will love you to the day you die. And he will love you forever. He will bring you into his eternal home, into that celestial city, folks. There is no doubt. I do not live with any doubt, folks, that I am making it because why? Because my God is faithful. He promised me in his word. He promised me he's coming again. And he's going to take me into that everlasting home. Praise God. He is faithful to his word always. And will be faithful. Now, amen, somebody. Amen. But here is another definition as we are defining faithfulness. Paul actually uses it in the New Te Testament. So, folks, if you look at, at a, a dictionary, um, you're going to find many definitions uh, of uh, faithfulness. But here is, is one that I, that I love, and it says uh, to follow through with a commitment. To follow through with a commitment, faithfulness, faithfulness, regardless of the difficulty. I love that. To follow through with a commitment, regardless of the difficulty, regardless of the hardship, regardless of the trials or the challenges might come, 
I am going to follow through. Even though if I stand um, to lose something, I will follow through with it. Even though there might uh, be great obstacles, uh, yes, but I will follow through. Because why? It is because I am faithful. I have committed myself to be faithful, praise God. And so you can count on me, you can depend on me. Folks, would you like to have somebody like that with you, praise God? That they have given to you their word and they are going to keep that word. It does not matter what. It may cost them daily, but you know they are going to follow through. Would we like to have people like that in our churches today? that have assumed assignments and assumed responsibilities and you can count on them. You can depend on them. You know that they are going to fulfill their roles. You know that they are going to show up. You know that they are going to be present. You know they are going to be punctual. You know they're going to stand with you, praise God. We need those people, folks, in every sphere of our church. We need them in our Sunday schools. We need them in our youth groups. We need them in our various ministries, men and women ministry in our choir, in the song leaders department. We need them, folks, in our church so that our church will continue to be strong. But when you have people that are not faithful, when you have people that do not keep their word, when you have people that are not constant, when you have people that are shaking, when you have people, folks, that will drop you like a ball, then I want to tell you something. You cannot accomplish much. But our God is someone like that. Glory to God. Amen. So remember what faithfulness is, folks. And remember that if you are a spirit-filled Christian, what it means, praise God, hallelujah. Because this, folks, is who our God is. What faithfulness is saying, and I give you a little bit more, what faithfulness is saying is that I will not quit. That's what faithfulness is saying. Faithfulness is saying I will not give up at all. Faithfulness is saying is that there might be misunderstandings along the way. But listen, even though there are misunderstandings and there are misgiving, it will not change my commitment to you. It will not change my commitment to Christ. It will not change my commitment to his church. Because who I am, I am spirit-filled. Who I am, I am faithful, praise God. And so it does not matter. There might be disappointments that will come. There might be discouragements that will come. But because I am faithful like my God, who is forever faithful, I am not going to be moved, praise God. You know, the Apostle Paul gives us this admonition. First Corinthians 15, 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable. Unmovable. We're living in a time, folks, that people do not know this word. We're living in a time that people are easily moved. And people are easily swayed. As I said, the faith of so many is just fickle. Fickle. They do not have a strong faith and they are not grounded. Anything will move such a person that is not grounded. It does not take much at all. I have to share this with you because some uh, Dennis Deloxing, and I call his name this morning because you all know his name. He came to get some doubles this past week on. And so him and Ryan Ramkawan. These guys one day I came out to meet them and you know we were talking. And so we were talking about pigeons. Because they're doing their roof in their over there in their house. When the is, 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 is living and he was talking about we were talking about pigeons. And he said, Pastor boy. I am. I mean, we have to change that rope. Pigeons mess it up pretty bad. And see, I try everything. Pastor, I tell you, I try everything. I try shooting them pigeons. 
I try poisoning them pictures. Nothing working at all. I almost want to tell them the only thing that you didn't try that is sure to work, you should have baptized them. <laughs> <laughs> After they get baptized, you don't see them, but not the ten this morning. <laughs> not the ten this morning. Not the ten. Amen. Can I hear amen, somebody? Amen. That is something that you have that happened. People feel that baptism is the end of the journey. Once I get baptized, I'm good. Good, good. Folks, you just started your journey. Praise God. Amen. You just started your journey. You are on the way. You have not arrived. You are on the way. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So just remember that, folks. Just remember that. So I have to know me. I always try to make a little humor and so on. I said, Dennis, and he crack up in laughing, boy. He crack up in laughing. I say, I wish. I had a church that was full of members who were like those pigeons. I say you shoot them on the air going. I say you poison them on the air going. I say I wish my members were like that. It doesn't matter what you do, they are leaving the church. Amen. But today, you have members in churches who need to say shoot and they're gone. <laughs> you gotta say shoot and they're gone. They like that today. Why? A fickle faith, somebody. Not a strong faith. Not a strong faith at all. You see? And so we have to look very carefully, folks, about our faith. The standard of our faith. The quality of our faith. What kind of faith that we really possess as believers. Remind you, faith is the victory. The Bible tells us, praise God. And Jesus said, when he comes, the Bible says, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith upon the face of the earth. In other words, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faithfulness? Shall he find faithful people in the church? This is what is going to be the crucial factor when Jesus comes just now. Will he find faithful people in the church? It doesn't matter what happens. Glory to God. They will not deny the faith. Oh, this is real in many parts of the world today. We haven't had it here, but folks, there are many people that have to die for their faith overseas. Do you know that somebody? Amen. There are many that are jailed because of their faith. Do you know that somebody? Amen. There are many that are, their families are torn apart, separated because they are Christians. Father going to jail, what not, folks. Um, you see, this is happening in our world today. And folks, we have to examine our faith this morning. How genuine, how real is our faith. We have to make sure today that we are like our God, faithful. In the 16th century, there was a Protestant reformer in England by the name of Hugh Latimer. And so he was known as a great preacher of his day. And as a result, he had many opportunities uh, to preach. So once he found out that he was to preach to a great man, in fact, before the king of England himself, Henry VIII, of being what a privilege and opportunity to stand before the king himself and to preach. So he knew his responsibility was very, very great to bring a message before such a man. And so he searched his own heart and he knew that the message that God had given to him was a message that the king did not want to hear. Folks, I cannot tell you how I tremble with some of the messages that God gave me. Sometimes very hesitant to speak because you just feel that some people may not take it too well. That there are people that are already looking to take offense. There are people, you know, the, the famous 
term that we have that the pelting stone from the pulpit boy <laughs> you understand folks there are people like that you see do not take the messages and says this is from God you see if you come to church and have come to hear from God you will hear from God God will speak to you you come with an open heart a receptive heart but if you come already a determined I know I'm going to get offended I know the pastor is going to preach something that I am going to like well that is exactly what is going to happen you see Come with an open heart. Be receptive. So he began his sermon. And this is how he began his sermon. He said, Latima, Latima, speaking about himself. He's preaching out to himself now as he stood before the king. He said, Latima, Latima, do you remember that you are speaking before the high and the mighty king, Henry VIII? Who has power to command you to be sent to prison and who could have your head cut off? If it please the king, will you not take care to say nothing that would offend royal heirs? He is saying this to the king and to the congregation. But he paused and he continued and he said, Latima, Latima, do you not remember? That you are speaking before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, before him at whose throne Henry the Heir will stand before the judgment, to whom one day you will have to give God an account of yourself, Latima. Be faithful to your master and declare his word. Hallelujah. He knew he was called before to preach. He was called to be faithful. I want you to understand something, church. Glory to God. Before any ministry that you are called to, your first calling is to be faithful. And if you do not deem to be faithful, and you do not want to be faithful, do not take that ministry. You will ruin it folks and yourself at the same time. If you do not have a heart, folks, that I am going to be true, loyal, faithful, committed to this, do not be a part of it. It's like marriage. If you do not intend to be faithful to that man, to that woman that you are getting married, you have to spend the rest of your life till you get old, wrinkled, gray, whatever comes in your marriage, sickness and in health, Sickness and health. Do not step up at the altar and get married. Do not, folks, because you are going to ruin lives in the process. Faithfulness before ministry. People want ministry, but they don't want faithfulness somebody. They love the spotlight, but faithfulness is another thing. They love the position, but folks, uh, they do not love faithfulness. Sir. If you want God to use you in a mighty way, first thing, that I am going to be faithful. Above all things, I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to be committed there. I'm not going to run when disappointments come. I'm not going to run when problems come. I'm not going to, to run when things are not done my way and the way that I like it. You know, some people are, if it's not done my way, I want nothing to do with it. I want no part to do with it. It has to be done my way, otherwise I don't want anything to do with it. Folks, don't get involved in ministry. It's not for you. Ministry is not for you. Ministry is not for unfaithful people, folks. Ministry is for those who deem to be faithful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be faithful. So Latima faced the choice. Would he preach what man wanted him to hear? Or would he preach what Christ would happen to preach? Folks, do I have your permission this morning to always preach behind this pulpit? What God wants me to preach? Amen. Do I have your permission? Amen. Only half the church or less than half responded yes. But bless God for you. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Praise God. 
The rest of you thinking about should I answer? Because I don't know the pastor might say something one that I like. You know? And I might have some issues with that. I might, I might want to meet him at the door and pong him good. I might want to call him on the phone and give him a piece of my mind. I walked up, so I don't know how to answer this morning. You understand, folks? But I want to say it to you folks. That yes, I will be true to you and you have known that. For all these years of ministry, I've been very constant before you all. Constant, you all know that. Praise God. Since 1988, constant in the ministry. Just matter what happened, pastor has never left the pulpit and never wrong somebody. Just matter who say what. Just matter who come and who leave, pastor is here. You know that, praise God. There has been many, many troubles, but praise God, I have strived to be constant before you. Genuine glory to God. You know, folks, I ain't hiding behind nothing, praise God. You know that glory to God. Constant, praise God. And will continue to do so by the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But even though, if I did not get the permission of you, the church this morning, to preach what God has said upon my heart, yet, folks, um, my first responsibility comes to God. What I preach, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I must preach His word. When God called me into ministry, folks, uh, let me tell you, there are some people say they call. I want to know who called them, how they call. They have no answer. They just get that little feeling or something like that. Glory to God. A lot of people call themselves, God, I call them. They call themselves uh, into ministry. The Apostle Paul says, many of them, uh, you understand, uh, went, but my daddy used to say that phrase as well. Many of them went, but they were never sent. They called themselves, and it will be proven. After the why, you will see they fall away somewhere. This is what this is what happens so often. You have to think very seriously. Praise God. Today is the day of your baptism. There is no turning back. Glory to God. We will sing that at the pool in a little bit. Praise God. And folks have sang that. Hallelujah. All through my life. And I know, glory to God, amen, that this is what is more important than my preaching. This is more important, folks, than how I look here this morning. Glory, I try to look my best, but it's more important. I want to be robed in faithfulness, not just nice suits and nice tie, praise God, and nice shoes, but I want to be robed in faithfulness, praise God, so that you will know you have a faithful pastor, you have a faithful man behind this pulpit, glory to God, hallelujah. Whatever ministry that I assume, I am faithful to that ministry, praise the name of of Jesus, glory to God. But most importantly, folks, amen, that I am always faithful to Christ and to his cross. Amen. Glory to God. Ministry is not an easy thing, folks. Unless God has called you, don't say, don't say that God has called you. You've been deceiving your own, own self. God gave me a word when God called me. And in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 6, God said, because when I was called, very, very young, and I was scared to death. How could I possibly honor this call, Lord? The Lord said, don't say that you are too young. Listen, I will give you the words to speak. Says God said to me, don't be afraid of the faces of men. Don't be afraid. You speak the word that I put in your heart. It has not been easy. Sometimes folks, you know, you know, it's not easy sometimes to to you know to, to face the challenges of life you want to you want to back down you want to you want to retreat you want to, to take a back seat you understand I know I know that I, I have been there but you see God has called and when God has called I must answer when God called I must follow because ultimately when we stand before God then folks uh, I am not going to have to give uh, God an account I will not have to give rather uh, my wife an account my children an account but God the account praise God I have to answer God and each of us here this auditorium today and those of you who are listening 
you will have to answer to God. And what God wants more than more than all your talents and all your gifts. You know, some people think that God so wants their gifts. And so God wants their talent because they have so much talent, they have so much gift. Man will run after you because you have different talent. Everybody wants you. You're like a popular singer. Everybody's seeking after you. Oh boy, I want you. I could book you and walk up. You know, you're a speaker, you can really speak. Everybody booking you. Yes, man, I want you, I want you, I want your folks. But let me tell you something. What God wants more than your ability and your talent and anything else that you have, God wants your faithfulness. Can I hear you, man, somebody? That's what God wants. God wants your faithfulness above everything else, praise God. He wants you to, He wants to know that you are true to His calling, true to the cross, glory to God, true to the blood that was shed for you. That's what God wants to know, praise God. You want a marriage to blossom? There must be no reservations. There must be no retreat. Glory to God. There must be a full commitment. The wife must know that you, my husband, will never leave. You will never run out of me. It doesn't matter what may happen. I may change in my physical features. And it will come. It will come. But I'm going to stay still. I am looking for a new model. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can I hear amen somebody? Amen. The husband needs to know that too. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. There might be other men that could better provide. But folks, it doesn't matter. Men may promise me other things. What the husband can't give you. Mm -hmm. Say, listen. I have made a full commitment. You could promise me what? You could promise me a new car. You could promise me a, a diamond necklace. You could promise me a, 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 a trip abroad. You could promise me a house. Listen, I am faithful to the vows that I have taken. I will stay with this man till death do me part. Praise God. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. As I said, the world is struggling when it comes to terms of faithfulness and has gotten in the church folks that very few are faithful. Very few are faithful. Are faithful. So here was a man. Here was a man that was faithful. He faced the choice. He made the choice. The choice was, I'm going to preach not what King Henry VIII wanted, but what God wanted me to preach. And he preached that word. Well, he took a stand for truth, and the man preached boldly, but eventually he was martyred. Not by the king, but by his daughter. Watch out, if the father will get you, the daughter will get you. If the mother will get you, the son will get you. Watch out, folks. I want to tell you something. The devil, oh, I tell you, he want to get you. Folks, mm-hmm, yes. The daughter got it. He was martyred. But he was faithful in declaring the word of God without faith and partiality. The apostle Paul shared the same conviction. In Galatians 1.10, he said, I do not seek to court the favor of men. You have to watch out, folks, about trying to win the favor of men. Because I want to tell you something. I have been there and I have to keep watching myself. I want to win the favor of people. Because, you know, I want to be in their good graces. But I want to tell you, folks, uh, it is something hard to maintain. And you want to be honest with me this morning. It is hard to maintain so that you will be in the good graces of people for the rest of your life. In your own family, you lose graces. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in your own family, you lose graces. As a parent, it is easy to lose graces even in your children that you have brought up. And folks, and you are supporting your own children, you could lose Graces, uh, and I want to tell you, they could turn against you. We read it happening to yes, David, uh, them, his own children, uh, Absalom turned against him and wanted to murder him, wanted to kill him. We lose graces, uh, folks, uh, even by those. Jesus lost graces uh, with one that he had took under his arms. Uh, we are talking about Judas, um, and Jesus lost the graces uh, of one of his own, uh, where Judas sold the Lord out for 30 pieces of silver. You have to watch 
much about trying to win favor of people by compromising. Do not compromise your biblical conviction. Do not compromise the word to find favor and basis with nobody. If you want to find favor, find favor with God. If you want to find grace, find grace with the Lord. Because today, you may compromise your faith for somebody outside. You may compromise your conviction for somebody outside. But I want to tell you something. It won't be long before folks uh, that they find something in you that will disappoint them. And let me tell you something. They will leave you out in the rain. That is human nature, somebody. That is human nature. Do not seek uh, to find, to make sure that everybody like you. Uh, Everybody speak well about your folks. Uh, do not live for that. Uh, do not, but live for God. Uh, do not live for human praises. Uh, but live for the praises of the one uh, who died on the cross of Calvary for you. Who shed his blood, glory to God. Uh, who delivered you from hell and is coming back again. Give him praise. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Apostle Paul says, I do not seek to court the favor of men. I love the word here by preaching a false gospel, Galatians 1.10. For in doing so, I am not a true servant of Jesus Christ. Am I to compromise the word so that our chairs could be always be filled and packed up? Should I, folks, water down the gospel so I could bring in the crowds into the church? So that we, everybody could say we have a packed church. We have a big church, somebody. Should I do that, to folks, hmm? in order to bring, to fill our baskets? Should I compromise the word so that our baskets could be filled? Come on, somebody. Hmm? Should I compromise it so we could build a bigger building and have more people come in, folks? Should I compromise it, folks, so that more people might view our broadcast on the air? Should I water down the gospel so that I might win the favor of men? And in so doing, the preacher ain't going to heaven, neither the people he's preaching to as well. Because you're not preaching the true gospel. This is what Paul says. They're preaching what? A false gospel. Amen. Bringing in the crowds. Bringing in the people, folks. But I want to tell you something. They're not bringing them into the kingdom of God. There's one way to get into the kingdom of God. John the Baptist preached. Jesus preached. Repent. Praise God. Repent. Unless you're not willing to repent, folks. Son. There is no kingdom of God. There is no heaven. We have to be clear and firm on that. The Apostle Paul was faithful to the task, calling that, that God had given to him. He was faithful to it. And in closing this morning, how faithful are you? When it boils down to faithfulness, how faithful are you today? Could you say that you are faithful to the Lord just as you were when you just got saved? 20 years ago, 30 years ago, in my case, many years ago, folks, I've been saying, could I say that I am still faithful to that call that God has given to me when I was a little boy, little boy, to be a preacher? Glory to God. Am I still faithful? I have to look at myself. Have I drifted over the years? Have I drifted? Have I missed it somewhere? Or am I still in the call? Am I still on fire for Jesus and vibrant for the Lord? Am I still passionate about my about preaching the word to the people? Am I still passionate about pastoring? I have to keep examining myself to make sure that I do not become cold. I am fiery hot in the Lord, glory to God. You have to keep examining. The Apostle Paul says, examine, examine yourself and see if you're really in the favor or else you have a reprobate mind. The Apostle Paul called for self-examination. You have to see where you are, where you were 10 years ago. Are you still the same strong person? The person that loved the Lord, loved the church, or oh, now that faith has been meaning, the joy is going, and now it's a problem, it's an excuse for everything. You have to examine where you were and where you are now. Check yourself, folks, and get back in line before it gets more worse, before it gets so bad. I tell you, 
that you can't even hear the voice of God no more. Preaching won't do anything anymore, somebody. Your conscience saying that the heart, heart I, the, the Bible tells us, no, always examine yourself and make sure that you are always on fire for Jesus. So folks, a spiritual Christian and a faithful Christian goes hand in hand. Glory to God. Don't mind the tongue, tongue talking. Talk about tongues you want it, no problem. Don't mind the prophesying, no problem. If you are prophesying what you want and what not. Don't mind all them things. Don't mind folks every, every all the you know the, 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 the loudness and what not. Be loud, be loud, yes. But praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But above all the things. Amen. True sign of a spirit-filled believer in Christ is that I am faithful. I am constant. True sign. Is this what the church needs? Is this what the world needs today? Faithful Christians. Faithful. When Jesus comes just now, that's the jewel. That's the prize. That's who he's coming for. So why shall he find faith on the earth? Faithfulness. Faithful people. Bow with me in prayer. Father, thank you for the message that has come today. Like Latima, I preach the word of God and only trusting you that it might have fallen on good soil, fertile soil. It will bring fruit unto righteousness. Glory to God. And I pray, dear Lord, that the people of power and science, born and looking for a position in church or a new position somewhere, looking for some new thing because there are a lot of people they just get kind of tired. They just need something new in their life to give them a little excitement. That's all. That's all the human flesh is. We don't know this thing called constant. We gotta have something new. We always gotta have something new, or we're not excited. Life become dull, become boring. We just gotta have something new. Gotta have something. I, I just gotta make that care that I have new. I just, I just gotta do something. I gotta do something without hair. I just, I just gotta make it new. I gotta do something without nails. I gotta just make it new. And, 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 you know, I, I just, I just gotta have it new. And realize that when we get those new things, hey, <laughs> long before we come old, <laughs> that we're looking for something new again. <laughs> oh, constant, 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 constant. Praise God. That's what you're asking for. Help us to be that church and the ten that are getting baptized, dear Lord, above anything else, before seeking any ministry in the church, any position, they will seek faithfulness to be faithful to God. Because God is faithful to us. If you're there and your backslider appeal to you, and the Holy Spirit is appealing to you, why don't you repent and turn around? Praise God. You're headed in a bad direction right now. You're headed down a wrong road, a bad road, bad, bad road. It's looking nice, it's looking promising, but it's a bad road that you are headed. Folks, and if you can't be faithful where you are, you're going to be faithful nowhere else. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. It's the same thing to repeat. A lot of people like that, touching and going, touching and going, touching and going like that, coming burden. From one flower to the next, one flower to the next. That is all you do. You need, you need the flower in, the flower, the flower in. That is all you do. No wonder why the poor thing lifespan is only six weeks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We dedicate it right now, all over. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Says, do we have any? Every time I see you there, I know you have something, all right? Glory to God. So this morning, we have some prayer requests. Before we close and go to the baptism. So we're going to be praying for Malachi, Johnny, Mina, uh, Vijanti, all of, all of uh, them. Okay, they live in the United States. Uh, this is our brother Shola. It's your family. All right. We pray for them. They ask prayer for their safety. Father, uh, we just lift up our brother's family. Names have been called this morning. Children, I believe, might be some grandchildren as well. 
And yeah, we do pray because some places there is a spike that goes down and then it goes up. Some places getting better and then it gets getting worse. But dear Lord, we pray for safety for your children. Yeah. Again, you said no plague will come near our dwelling. So dear Lord, we pray that you'll keep this family safe. We ask for Neil. He got a lot of back pain. Otherwise, he would have been here. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you bring him into our brother's back. He's been suffering. Lord, touch him and heal him, Lord. Can you bless his family? Supply their every need in Jesus' name. Also, dear Lord, uh, Neil's sister-in-law, who is uh, six months pregnant and getting pain. She's been in the hospital since Friday. Dear Lord, we pray, dear God, in Jesus' name, that your good hand would be upon this dear one. Lord, in her time, dear Lord, of, of carrying, dear Lord, just six months, dear Lord, so much of pain, dear Father. Dear Lord, I pray that you intervene in the name of Jesus, dear Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Sister Laura, who is celebrating her birthday tomorrow. Laura Jaikara, be your blessings be upon her, dear Father. And bless her husband, Jimmy, dear Father. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise. Folks, let's all stand and uh, as we sing and we closing off. Glory to God. And be back here six thirty for the evening service. I want to encourage you to invite and uh, if you can stay back behind for the baptism, glory to God. I know it's raining right now, so what's happening there? If the Lord is seeing a little little rain just to get you, you're in the mood. Alright, to the to the real thing comes. And if we were believing in sprinkling, then would you have to get to the pool? Right? That's not baptism. It's not biblical baptism. It is by emotion. Glory to God. God did, God did, God did. That's what the word baptize. Coming from the Greek word baptizio, it means to immerse. It means to dip. So you've got to go down because it represents what? Death of Christ on the cross as you stand in the water. And as you go into the water, it represents the burial of Christ. And when you raise from the water, it represents the resurrection of Christ. This is what baptism symbolizes. I know you have been taught those things. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah my provider, you are more.
thank you so much. So let's um, head to, uh, to the back and do the baptism. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. 